Ah, the Braveheart treatment. Netflix's The King stars Timothy Chalamet as Hal, an inebriated humanist who bears no real relation to the true Henry V. Joel Edgerton plays Samuel Tarly if he wasn't a bitch. Even Robert Pattinson makes an appearance showing he knows how to take the piss out of a role. The King is a loose adaptation of Henry V's ascension to King of England. He deals with the ever-growing tension between England and France, which leads to the ultimate battle of Agincourt. The source material for which doesn't appear to be historical events so much as the Shakespearean play, or rather parody, of Henry V, which is as accurate to the cruel king as Jaws was to the 1916 Jersey Shore shark attacks. Although they do make Hal look like a medieval Mo Howard, so points for effort. Right away, the problem with films based on historical events is that they have to be critiqued on both its own qualitative merits and historical accuracy. I do not so much care for a film that claims to be a period piece while taking more liberties than a government takeover. A film can be correct down to the very words spoken verbatim, but still a horrendous disaster disaster, while the reverse also holds true for those who have smudged historical fact while also being great film. As mentioned before, Braveheart comes to mind. Granted, with a little leeway, since we don't exactly know William Wallace's origins perfectly, or his whole life for that matter, so a few things can be smudged, but this doesn't change the fact that there are other discrepancies that do hold it back. The King, on the other hand, is somewhere in the middle. The acting is great. The dialogue even better, with far more emphasis on a strong narrative with solid writing that doesn't rely on the dark, edgy crap that sucks the fun out of most circumstances. Instead of a bunch of dribbled Englishmen saying fuck all the time, we are treated to an archbishop with a lisp that makes him sound like Mike Tyson. Furthermore, watching knights in full armor take blows across the head while slipping and sliding in mud is like watching the Renaissance Fair on ice. So it's nice to see details being attended to. I understand that some accuracy can be changed if it improves the flow or even structure of the narrative. This is film we're talking about, so you have roughly an hour and a half to two on average to cut the fat off. Hell, if we didn't do that, Peter Jackson would still be making adaptations of Tolkien's work. Coming soon to theaters near you, on November 5th, see Lord of the Rings 37. Are we there yet? On that note, could you imagine being stuck in the perpetual hell that would be accurately adapting the Silmarillion? Fuck that, I'd rather have a BDSM horse step on me, calling me Seabiscuit. As I said before, I'm not saying you can't alter a character, but with historical events that are as well documented as Henry V, the choices he made are already enticing enough. For example, in this version, he's a drunken semi-pacifist who is reluctant to go to war. Cute idea, but the real Henry V wanted to declare war on France before he had ascended the throne. There is another great inaccuracy here, as France is shown to have a pair of balls when we all know that France participates. What they do to the Dauphin, while terrible in both respects, is almost the literal personification of France through the years. None of this goes into how ruthless Henry was either. If you want a basis for understanding Henry V's mentality, then look up what he did to the prisoners after the Battle of Agincourt. These kinds of changes to Henry V making him out to be a calm, restrained, and benevolent leader is like saying Vlad Tepes was nothing more than an English proprietor who had a fondness for doing butt stuff. For these reasons, it is honestly difficult to grade the King accurately. On the one hand, it is a surprisingly solid film from Netflix. As mentioned before, the acting and writing are both solid. The film doesn't take unnecessary risks. The King is also accomplished with such an array of practical effects that even the very few CGI shots there are look real enough. However, for me, the film is held back by the laundry list of historical changes portraying the events with the accuracy of a blunderbuss in the hands of a stormtrooper. So, for these reasons, I'm going to hold the film back as pretty alright. Who knew Netflix had two pretty solid little films in their library? Now you'll always remember by liking, sharing, and subscribing to my channel for more Netflix and other film reviews. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.